Hello, this is Ken Rust with Louisiana Pond Management, and this is a video regarding a question that we get quite often. How do I tell harmful plants from healthy plants in my pond? One of the main ways that you need to approach any kind of a plant or any kind of a plan for addressing plants in your pond is positive identification. That's what we deal with um, the most as a problem. And so with that, if you can take a picture of a plant at about two feet, um, even if you have to get a rake and pull it up out of the pond um, so that you can see what's growing underwater, or if, and then also if you'll take a picture at about five feet of the plant growing in the pond, usually you can send those to us. We can positively identify those for you, and we're, we're glad to do that. And then you can move forward and decide whether it's a plant that you want to control in your pond or not. So the, um, the other thing is whether it is an invasive or whether it's just a nuisance or a problematic unhealthy plant for your pond. And invasive means that it comes from another country that it is not, or a non-native would be another way to say that. And so those would be from a, a, another country that have, have infested our waters here in the United States. So this first picture is not your friend. This is a, a bad algae, it's a string algae called Lingvia and that is not your friend in your pond. I think you can positively identify that as something you don't want growing in your pond. And um, that would make for a, a, a method of, that would be a threshold of treatment and you would want to approach that in your pond and get rid of that. This algae is very, very slick between your fingers. It's called Spirogyra and it grows in the cool season. And so it's really not harmful. Sometimes it can get really bulky in the pond but as soon as the waters warm up in spring and early summer, this algae is going to disappear and then your other plants are going to take over for the rest of the season. So this is not a plant that unless it really got out of control, I would worry about any sort of treatment for them. This is giant cut grass. And while it grows relatively slow, you can see that it does make a big bulky mass over time. This is on the edge of a lake and it's, you know, there's no way that you can access the lake in this portion where it's growing. And giant cut grass is called cut grass for a reason, and that's because it will cut you if you get near it. So you, uh, removing this and treating this with herbicide is a good idea before it starts to make a mass of this size. This is a Zola or water fern. It's about maybe a quarter inch to a half inch in diameter, and it is quite prolific. Um, it can cover a pond relatively fast, has little roots that hang down in the water, and it reproduces by spores. And so it can cover a, a small pond. This is about a one acre pond. It covered it in a single season. And um, it is, you know, it's not difficult to treat with herbicide to control, but that's about the only approach that's going to work for Azola. You see this developing in the corners it's not going to stay there. It's going to move in and across your pond and uh, become a problem. So addressing that early is a good idea. This is Salvinia and there is a native and a non-native Salvinia. So that's best um, identified whether it's a native or non-native by close-up inspection. So a sample or a site visit is warranted. This is another one that really covers a pond fast and it is a problem in the southern United States and the eastern United States and has destroyed many bodies of water. This is a full coverage of a pond that we treated and then you can see that the, the lady there in the picture is very happy about her pond being treated and, uh, and, and recovering open water out there. The right herbicide and a good plan then, uh, then you can get uh, great results like this. This is duckweed and if you look a little closer there's some dark um, areas in between the light colored duck, duckweed and those dark green areas are what they call water meal. Water meal is very similar to green corn meal if you had to describe it and that's why they call it water meal. It's very small, it's the world's smallest flowering plant and uh, other than that you really do not want this in your pond. It's difficult to get rid of it's small, it gets in all the nooks and crannies of the vegetation around the edge of your pond. And so if you see that, you want to address that early, get somebody to treat it or treat it, and uh, get that out of there. Duckweed 
is very prolific as well, but it's, it's much easier to treat. This is the result of neglect. So if you see it in a corner and you don't take care of it, then you have a pond that's fully covered and it looks very similar to a golf green. And this picture is several acres of infestation of water hyacinth. And water hyacinth makes a very pretty purple flower that floats on top, but it's very aggressive. And uh, it has also infested uh, many, many waters in the southern United States and really is the, the genesis of the whole industry of aquatic plant control because it clogs up so many waterways. Um, in the uh, early part of the century that the, the the government needed a plan just to control water hyacinth. You can't boat through this, you can't move through this. Um, it destroys a lot of habitat and fishery underneath it. And so if you see this in a corner, you don't want to ignore it or you can be looking at this instead of nice open water on your pond or lake. This is yellow water lily and it's quite crowded here, but yellow water lily is not really difficult to control but left to itself, it can it can choke out an area. It has a little white, uh, I'm sorry, a little yellow blossom on it. It's not super um, super attractive and flowery, but uh, it makes good structure for fish and small fish. Not a not a problem to control it, but it is a plant. It won't stay the same size. It's going to grow, so you need to have a plan to control it, and then it can be one of the the uh, better season uh, citizens in your pond rather than a nuisance nuisance one so at this level very low uh you know level of uh growth here that's great you have an area that you can fish around fish are likely gathering around that and then you can see here left to itself it would choke out this this whole corner of the pond this is also a good picture of a mixture of aquatic vegetation here so you have yellow water lilies here and then in the background you have um, water primrose and also alligator weed. Alligator weed is very aggressive. Water primrose is moderately aggressive. And so, but left to itself, this pond has got quite a bit of work to do, quite a bit of restoration work to do before you're gonna see open water out here and make it productive again. Um, we did um, actually treat this pond. They have open water out there and it, it looks beautiful. So this is a white water lily leaf. And again, just like the yellow water lily, it's got nice structure. It's, it's got some, uh, it's got a little frog on here. So it's great for habitat for wildlife um, and a, an area of interest in your pond. And then of course it makes beautiful, um, really nice smelling water lily flowers out there. And, and so that can be a really nice addition to the pond and it's easy to control one of these and not the one next to it with herbicide or even with physical removal. So white water lilies are a, a great plant to have in your pond for interest, for structure, for habitat. And, um, but like anything, it's going to grow and you need a plan to control it. Lotus is not particularly um, attractive to have in, in a pond. It just grows too darn fast. If you want to have this in a water garden or uh, some sort of a display garden, it's fantastic. These are quite common in Louisiana as a yellow water lily um, grown throughout the south, um, but they're too hard to boat through. It's They grow too fast. One, one um, lotus can take over an entire one acre pond um, in a single season. This is water shield and it's a small football shaped water lily leaf that floats on the surface and has a very small blossom that's just about uh, maybe three quarters of an inch to one inch in diameter across that blossom. You don't really see those unless you're looking for them, but the stems on water shield are very, very durable um, and it's almost impossible to, to boat through. So if you have a trolling motor or if you have a... Um, if you have a, even a small gas powered motor, it will choke it up. It'll, those, those stems will wrap around that propeller and, and pretty much stop it. And you can see they grow quite thick and they'll grow quite deep. They'll grow in probably six to, to eight feet of water and can really choke out an area and make it impossible to drag a fishing lure through or certainly um, not gonna be able to boat through that. This is it up close. 
It has a gelatinous layer on the bottom. So if you think you might have water shield, you turn it over, it's got this gelatinous layer on the bottom. Um, that's why they also call it snot bonnet, which is kind of a fun name. This unorganized mess is, is um, called bladder wart. It has tiny bladders that are on the, um, on the stem of this plant and that actually capture small zooplankton in the water. But it eventually will make a little star-shaped um, organized area at the top and put up a little yellow flower. Very interesting botanically. It chokes out areas. It's going to need treatment. It grows relatively fast. And so it's not really your friend in the pond. This is a um, parrot's feather area here and very pretty little plant. It grows out from the edge and it can get a little aggressive, but it's easy to treat and push back. So it makes nice structure for small fish and, um, and holds an area there quite, quite nice over to the edge. But if it gets, gets a little too aggressive, it's very easy to treat and push back. So this is, is one of those areas I'm talking about. It's going to hold um, lots of paraphyte for small fish, lots of structure for small fish, but it's not really getting too far out into the pond. This is pennywort, just like you have um, in your in your yard, uh, dollar weed, and left around the edge, it's not too bad, but this has been neglected. This is in a park in Baton Rouge, and it's gotten too far out there, so it's blocking any access for anyone to get out there and fish. It's also could hold a snake or two out there, and uh, it just needs to be pushed back and trimmed back so that it's at the appropriate level. This is alligator weed, not your friend. It's going to grow too fast and it's going to get out to the water and take over and it seeds in quite well. And so multiple treatments are going to be needed to take care of alligator weed. It has a small white um, blossom on the end of it, very similar to white clover. And that's, so that's one of the ways that you can positively identify alligator weed in your pond. Coontail grows underneath the water and it is not difficult to treat. It makes nice structure under the water. Again, it just is going to need some sort of plan for control because it's going to continue to grow. It's a native and um, again, not, not particularly hard to control. You can, you can maybe go do just a cove or an area and open it up and leave the other in place. This is another picture of bladder wart and you can see there's just a small tiny yellow flower over there to the left hand side of the screen that's just about to start blooming and of course that's going to make seeds and make make that necessary for a, a repeated treatment. Hydrilla is very aggressive at growing and it's very hard to get rid of. It has very strong rhizomes with a lot of energy saved up in the bottom of a lake and then it gets so thick that you can't motor through it. It also has some secondary growth on it from algae that can be toxic to wildlife and so it's not something you want to put in your pond. Um, you can see this out there. It's infested a lot of lakes um, just from, from boats transferring back and forth. And the big glob there in the middle is a bryzoan, which is a freshwater sponge, kind of a multifaceted picture there. But hydrilla is a non-native, invasive, aggressive plant. So if you see that in your pond, get that out, call a professional and get it treated. This is an example of when you need identification because when you see a big mass growing out here in the pond, you don't know what it is. You need to get a sample of that out, take a picture of it, get it to somebody who can possibly identify it and see if that's something you need to treat or if it's uh, a plant that is not very aggressive and that just is some good underwater structure. This shows a mixture of species. We have several of the ones we've talked about previously. It's got coontail. The red is a Zola, then we have duckweed, and then the fine stuff is water meal. This pond needs a lot of treatment, and it, it needs to be done fast before to, to renovate this pond and restore it to health before it gets out of control and kills fish and, uh, and just makes for a larger restoration. So that is uh, all we have to talk about today with how to recognize harmful plants from healthy plants in your pond. Stay tuned and uh, we look forward to speaking with you in the future.